Source Collectors and welcome to another Boss Bounty video and welcome to episode 212 of Ask Boss Bounty. This is the weekly Q&A series that drops every Sunday where I take your questions from the comment section below and do my very best to answer them. So if you have a question for next week's episode and you want to be featured in the video, be sure to leave that question in the comment section of this video. It has been the case where people have left questions on other videos and unfortunately I can't sort of go back through the comment sections of all of those videos to find the question. So if you do want your question answered then please make sure you leave it in the comment section of this video. With all that being said if you do happen to enjoy the video hit the like button down below, subscribe if you're new and let's get into this. GA says hi BB I read a great article on Banth Skull the other day. The subject was the idea of a subscription line of deep cut figures that would maybe average 25 pounds 30 us dollars per figure question for next week what do you think of this idea i'm totally up for this personally as a way of getting figures like neighboring lieds boshek and yoksgit on tvc cards keep up the great channel i listen every single sunday cheers my man so yeah absolutely i read the article as well on chris's awesome website bounceskull.com if you haven't checked it out already i'm sure you know who those guys are already and yeah, it's something that I'm not opposed to, essentially. I'm always up for, you know, getting more figures in TVC. And of course, Hasbro has a budget that it has to stick to. And that only enables it to get out a certain amount of figures a year. Unfortunately, that budget isn't where we as collectors would like it to be. So we're coming up with other ideas, basically, of how we can get these other figures. Now, some people have mentioned like HasLab Dream Packs. It surprised me that Hasbro haven't done that already, considering we've been talking about it maybe, I don't know, two years, so maybe that's not a viable option. So maybe another option to go down is like a subscription service. As I say, the vintage collection these days is an adult collector line. It's not the sort of line that you see in toy shops necessarily these days, especially in the UK. So why not have a subscription service? What I would be a little bit wary of is sort of mentioning the price and giving a Hasbro an excuse to charge an extortionate amount for a figure. I mean, $30 or £25 does sound a lot. I guess it does depend on which characters we will be getting, how definitive they will be. Of course, if you're gonna be paying that much money, you'd want them to be all new. And I guess if these are characters that, you know, a large majority of people want, but there's just absolutely no way that Hasbro are gonna do them, then maybe a subscription service is the way to go. As I say, it's something I'm not opposed to at all. I just think you need to be a little bit wary on, on the price side of things. Shazoom says, question for next week. We have so many repaints based off Battlefront 2, so why don't we have the main character, Iden Versio? She would be a great addition to the line and a female Patai pilot mold could get plenty of reuse. They could do Sabine in disguise as a pack-in with her unique TIE fighter. Not having her in the line despite having so many Battlefront figures feels really silly. Uh, yeah, this is the problem, isn't it? And you've kind of answered the question within your question there basically you've said you know why so many repaints based off battlefront 2 and the answer is is because they're easy for them to do you know battlefront 2 isn't a movie or a tv show it's not at the forefront of hasbro's thinking battlefront 2 a video game they're looking to get out the easy options the easy repaints and of course yeah i'm with you Iden versio would be a great character to have in tvc and as you say the body could be used for other figures as well but that is why they haven't done it. It's because it's going to cost a lot of money to do that figure versus something else that they want to put out in the line. So that is the reason, basically, that we don't have it. But as I say, buddy, I am with you. I would I would really like them to do that figure in the vintage collection. I think the car back would look awesome as well. John Rosman says, question for next week. One of the things I think would help waves of figures is if there was more of a formula to their makeup. They don't all need to be from one source, but single media source waves would be great. But I think waves consisting of one main character, two secondary tier characters and a background character and an army builder would be great way to go about it what do you think so yes often something i actually think about when i look at previous waves and things like that and waves that we've currently got and how those are made up and how they've come to the decision of which figures go with which in which waves and things like that if you read the blue milk book the tvc book uh, they mention it quite a lot in there about how hasbro especially in tvc 1.0 had like bands of or tiers of figures so you'd have a b c and d so A would be your, your big seller, your big character, like, you know, the one that's going to sell through loads and loads and loads, like Vader, for example, or Luke Skywalker. And then maybe they'll have sort of like secondary characters as B and C. And then you have D, which maybe are the ones that aren't going to really sell as many or the ones that aren't going to be as popular or well known to people, perhaps. So if we look at the most recent wave, this one here with Count Dooku and the three figures that I have there, 
It's blatantly obvious to me that obviously Count Dooku here is the star of the wave. He is also the figure that's cost them the most money. He is the one that's all new. All the others in some way are reuses. So you've got two repacks there with Photo Real. Excuse me, but that isn't the one that's got Photo Real. I haven't opened him yet. And the Clone Trooper is just a new helmet. So very little money has actually been spent on those. However, a lot of money has been spent on producing Count Dooku. So if you look at it from a purely monetary point of view, putting these three figures in an assortment with Count Dooku, I know these four are fan channel only, and if they were at retail, they'd have to be buying the assortment, right? So they'd have to buy these three figures. And I think that's basically how they get their money back on their investment on, on Count Dooku there. Not too sure how it works out when they want to do a whole wave of the same movie or or TV series or whatever. I remember in TVC 1.0, they had, you know, the whole Phantom Menace waves and things like that. So it is difficult to know exactly sort of the method to their madness, but I, I would imagine a lot of it has got to do with money and what's gonna sell and packing in figures that aren't gonna sell as many as the big character that will and things like that. But at the same time, maybe trying to sort of match figures up, right? So, you know, the clone trooper kind of goes with Dooku. They're from both from Attack of the Clones for example so but yeah let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about that that's just kind of my take on it really guan 79 says hey boss cheers for all the work you put into march madness i was quite surprised shocked at the direction it went my question is this seriously what people are wanting to be released in retail do you often look at what is submitted and debate the reality of this actually selling rather than being a peg warmer have you thought of adding a caveat with your debate would it sell well to each finalist well, first of all, I've just got to put a disclaimer out there that I have got nothing to do with March Madness. It's not my thing. Uh, that's for the guys at SWTVC. But if you're talking about my live stream where we completed the bracket, you know, that's just done for a bit of fun. That has no bearing on the actual result and the actual voting on actual March Madness, which is hosted, as I say, by the SWTVC guys. But if you're talking about my personal top 25 that I submit to get them on the bracket, then yes, I look at sort of both sides of things. I look at one side of, you know, what I would actually like in the line, which figures I want, and then also which ones would sell. I wouldn't really want to put something on my top 25 that I think would be an absolute dud and would like lose Hasbro money, for example. I just don't think that's really productive, really. I would rather figures get onto the bracket that are actual you know, serious contenders for being made. That's just my own personal thing. You know, you don't have to do it like that. And yeah, you're saying there, you know, would it sell or whatever? Absolutely, that's that's kind of how I do things. And I do hope when people are voting that they do sort of consider that as well, because the last thing that I would personally like, and this is for any polling, right? This isn't just um, March Madness or um, the one that we did, the last figure standing. You know, I would personally not want a figure to win that I feel would be an absolute dud. You know, even though lots of people have voted for it, that doesn't necessarily mean the wider community want it. You've got to remember that the people that are voting on these things are the hardcore collectors, the ones that are most invested in the line. But there's a whole bunch of people that are like casual collectors and, you know, they'll just see one in Forbidden Planet or they'll see one online and they'll just go, oh, he's a cool character. Or they might watch a video of the reveals and go, oh, cool, they're bringing out X character. I'm going to get that one, you know. They might not collect them all. So... Um, we have to just be a little bit careful with that sort of thing. But yeah, March Madness is fun. It's good to see the results and everything. Uh, but yeah, me personally, I, I vote for uh, ones that I also feel will sell. RD Evans says, hey boss, your videos have become a Sunday tradition that I look forward to to the rest of the week. Thank you, buddy. I really do appreciate that, buddy. He says, I appreciate the information and insights, but I also enjoy the occasional offbeat question. So I'll ask a couple. If you could choose a planet from Star Wars to live on, which would it be? And which starfighter from Star Wars would you most want to pilot? Two very cool questions there. Planet, yeah, I had a little think about this. And yeah, I would probably say Coruscant because there's lots of stuff going on, lots of nightlife, <laughs> things like that. Things that would suit me down to the ground. But then I thought, hang on a minute, I'm getting on a bit. I'm getting a little bit older now. Maybe Naboo is more my style, you know, something a bit more tranquil, something with some nice views and chill out areas and things like that so yeah at this point in my life i think i'd go with naboo and in terms of which star fighter i would like to pilot i think it has to be an x-wing unless i was going on the dark side and then i'd have like a tie interceptor or something but no 
I think an X-Wing it has to be. Fat Babies 100 says, Hey boss, question for next week. How would you feel about bringing back mail away figures and what sorts of characters would be good as a mail away reward? I wasn't around for the earlier collecting days when this was a thing, but always loved the idea. I know it's incredibly unlikely, but considering how many of the new releases many of us purchase, a loyalty program like that would be a ton of fun. So this is something that I actually forgot to mention when I was answering the question about the subscription service. So if there was a subscription service, I would want there to be rewards for people that, you know, have longevity in that subscription service, buy everything in that subscription service or however it might work. I would want them to like throw in some extras, maybe world building items, that sort of thing along the way within that subscription service to make it more um, valuable to the customer basically. But in terms of your question, in terms of mail aways, absolutely. At the end of the day, I'm, you know, a child of the 80s. I grew up with the Kenner figures and I absolutely loved it when my Palatoy Dengar arrived in its white box. I thought it was the best thing ever that I just had this Star Wars figure arrive in the post. It was great. And I know that they've done it in TVC 1.0 before with the Boba Fett, the, the white Boba Fett, which is a pretty cool thing. So I think maybe along those lines, I think possibly, you know, you're not going to get a new sculpt out of a mail away. It's got to be like a, a repaint or something like that. But I think there's loads of different things that they could do. Different clones, different stormtroopers. That's kind of where I think they should go there. Like the, the, Kenner, the Kenner Boba Fett would have been a great mail away. That would have been a really good one. Instead of, you know, putting that out in Walmart at $25 or whatever it was, that, that would have been a good... Um, mail away figure to to earn as you buy other things clone 7444 says good stuff tim question for next week have you considered bringing back some of your older video series you haven't touched for a while i'm currently enjoying going back and watching your throwback thursday series where you looked at and reviewed older figures from previous lines i think they add great variety to your channel seeing older stuff mixed in with the new and i always love seeing more of your take on things thanks for all you do for the community cheers from grant galaxy so yeah absolutely i have considered it i mean i did enjoy doing throwback thursday and clone trooper tuesday i guess i stopped those is because they just didn't seem to be getting as many views as some of my other video series so you kind of have to listen to your audience right so it's not like oh my god i didn't get many views on this video i can't do this series anymore it's more about why don't i get as many views on that video maybe it's you know, maybe it's the sort of thing that my audience doesn't want to see. So you kind of have to do that with YouTube. You sort of test things out and if they hit home, then great. Then you carry on doing more of them. And if they're not received that well, then maybe it's not something you should be doing, basically. But I did enjoy doing them. Having said that, I do kind of review older figures. I do have my opening older figures series, which I do very occasionally. Um, it's not a regular thing, but, you know, when I've picked up some figures, some older figures that I want for my scenes and my setup, then I do, um, you know, maybe open maybe four or five older figures in a, in a video so there is that but yeah in terms of throwback thursday that's that's not a thing anymore doug the priest musgrave says hey boss you think we'll ever get a dash rendar in the vintage collection well we are led to believe that hasbro look at these polls that we do and march madness and last figure standing and all that kind of thing and unfortunately dash rendar was beaten by ventress in the first round by a fair way might I add so if that's any indication to Hasbro how much that figure is wanted then I would probably say it's not going to be a thing but um, I know a lot of people out there do want Dash Rendar it comes up quite a lot in in my videos and things like that but you know if we're just going by that alone then it's a no. Alfred Pedno says question for next week are there enough clone troopers that we need to be made for a March Madness bracket keep up the good work mate. So that means, is there 64 different clone troopers out there that people would want in their collections to make a meaningful bracket? I'm not too sure if there's 64. You could definitely do 32 maybe, 16 on each side. I've just got a couple here in front of you, which I would absolutely love updated versions of using the new body. You know, you've got Commander Gree there. You've got the ATRT driver. I would love a new ATRT driver. Commander Cody, Bly. There's so many that we could name. I'm just not sure if there's 64. Of course, March Madness is always based on new sculpts, so there's never any clone troopers on that bracket at all. They're not allowed. Uh, so yeah, I understand why you're asking, and it's a cool concept, and I'd be up for it. Um, I would definitely vote on that because I do love the clones. And yeah, these two here would be very, very high up on my personal list. Ed Wilfratus says, do you think that they would make a vintage collection Jaina Solo in the black pilot suit. 
So this is something that the Black Series got, and when they got that figure, I was really, really jealous of it, actually. It was, it was at the time where I think I'd just finished picking up the odd Black Series figure. I was done with the line, basically. And it was one that I looked at with Envy. I thought she looked really, really good. And unfortunately, it's one of them, isn't it? I mean, I can't see Hasbro paying a shed load of money to make Jaina Solo in that pilot's outfit if it's going to be a one and done. If they can use the figure for other things. So... Any Black Series collectors out there that's watching this that's got that figure, let me know in the comment section below how Hasbro made that figure. Is it made up of other parts or is it a you know a new sculpt, that Jaina Solo? Because for me, you know, if you're gonna do an all new sculpt for that figure, that seems not a waste, but you know, what else are they gonna use it for? So are there other any female parts that exist in 3.75 that we could use to get a figure out like Jaina Solo? That would be awesome because yeah, she is she is a great looking figure, that one. Mitchell Gum says, fantastic discussion on the reissues, Tim. Good job covering all aspects. I'm a carded collector and own every single VC to date. Although I collected mine out of the love of the Kenner card and not necessarily the increased value, to be fair, it doesn't hurt my feelings that my VC20 unpunched Canadian Yoda is worth an outrageous amount of money. So I get that card collectors would not want updated figures on re-release cards like the Attack Commander. So to continue this discussion, my question for next week is, if Hasbro issued an updated figure on the first run card back and used a new number like VC66A, Crumb, so like VC05A for Attack Commander, do you think that would satisfy carded collectors? In other words, would doing that still negatively impact the price of the original VC05? Would be a great poll of some sort to hear from carded collectors how they would feel about it, much like the original Kenner figures. There will always be a desire for the first run TVC 1.0 figures on the secondary market. Well, to be honest, buddy, Hasbro have already answered the question for us because in between you asking that question on last week's video and the midweek reveals of Darth Vader, they've already done it. We now have the brand new A New Hope Darth Vader on that classic Kenner card back, which is the same card back they used for VC93 Darth Vader. So you've got a vastly superior figure on the same card back. Of course, the warning label's been changed, the back of the card's different, but they've updated the number. They've given it a totally new number. So it's the virtually exactly the same card, same film out, but they've given it a new number. And I think personally, if they are gonna be using the same image and the figure is completely different like that, then that is the way they should be going. They should be giving it a new number, which is kind of what I alluded to in last week's sort of talk about it. But I would have preferred them to do an all new image, really. It just would have mixed it up a bit, make things a little bit different. You know, we've got the Vader from Return of the Jedi with the um, helmet off with Sebastian Shaw. We've got the classic Return of the Jedi where he's pointing with the um, Emperor's Wrath figure inside. We've got VCO8, Empire Strikes Back card. We've got the Rogue One Vader as well. So it would have just been nice to maybe just get another one out there on on a, a different film out. But I can understand why they've done it. It's the definitive a New Hope Vader, so it's got to be on that classic Kenner card back. So I, I completely understand. Palpatine1975 says, Greetings, my apprentice. I've been watching you with great interest, my friend. A question for next week. I'm very pleased with the new TVC Count Dooku figure. To say it's amazing is an understatement. The TVC line has been knocking it out of the park in recent times, even surpassing the Black Series in terms of sculpt, detail and paint apps. Another good example is the Grand Inquisitor, another fantastic figure. It seems now Hasbro is taking more risks with new molds and recently it has paid off. My question is, with Dooku being a prequel Sith Jedi character, could we see more prequel Jedi especially the council members like Saez Tin, Kiadi Mundi, Plo Kloon, Eeth Koth, Coleman Trebor, etc. The list goes on. We are sorely lacking when it comes to Jedi characters in the line. Isn't it about time? It, it, it really is. Um, what I would say, I think I've mentioned this before, is that they kind of need to get a one of the main Jedis out there with an all-new Jedi body, basically. They've kind of done it for the Obi-Wan from the Obi-Wan series with the, uh, the two-pack there. Maybe they can reuse that, but... There's so many different Jedis that can use the same body. I'm sure they've done it in the past, you know, just re-sculpt small parts of it for the different kinds of Jedi. But, you know, a lot of the Jedis wear the same outfits, basically, the Jedi robes and, and things like that. So maybe that's the first thing they need to do is get one of the main characters out there in those robes and then they can start mixing it up. This is No Cave says question for next week. There has been a good deal of chatter in the community about the 20th anniversary of Revenge of the Sith coming up in 2025 and how to potentially celebrate it in TVC but 2025 also marks the 10th anniversary of the beginning of the sequel trilogy as The Force Awakens was released in 2015. 
With the exception of VC-308 Finn figure, the TVC mainline has been largely devoid of characters from the sequel trilogy since early 2020. Do you think 2025 presents Hasbro the opportunity to revisit the sequel trilogy and do you think they're likely to commemorate that 10th anniversary? It certainly gives them the opportunity to do it, right? Because it's the 10th anniversary, as you've just mentioned there. So the opportunity is there. Will they do it? I've got to say, I think it's unlikely in TVC anyway. Maybe maybe in the Black Series, possibly. I just can't see it happening. I think there's too much going on in terms of new media that they still need to focus on. There's still figures from the most recent TV shows. Then you've got the Acolyte coming up. You've got Skeleton Crew coming up. Loads of other stuff coming up you know, maybe another Mandalorian, Ahsoka Series 2 and or Series 2. So I just, I just can't see it happening. And you know, the proof in the pudding really is this figure right here. That's, that's all they can really sort of amass for a sequel trilogy showing is a repack from the 3.75 inch black series. And if you saw my review on it, I'm not very kind to it. It's a, it's a poor figure, you know, he's only just standing up like that, you know, you could blow on him and he'll fall over. The legs are terrible. The knees are terrible. It's just a, a, a pretty poor figure all round. And it's got to be said, it's a it's a quite a lazy release, isn't it? You know, if you're trying to get people um, enthusiastic about the sequel trilogy, that figure is not the one that you release in the line. But hey, what can I say? I can't see him doing it. And I just think maybe um, it's still a little bit early to start releasing sequel trilogy i still think it's a little bit raw out there all right then guys that's it for this week's episode i want to thank you all for watching and thank you to my patreon supporters and channel members also for supporting the channel in the way that you do don't forget if you do want your question featured next week then please leave your question in the comment section of this video and hopefully you'll be featured thanks for watching everybody and we shall see you on the next one